for. And there's an important concept that I've not covered yet uh, that I do want to cover right now. And, um, and it's a concept in the 5th and the 14th Amendment, and it's called due process. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that up there, and then I'll read a little bit and sort of ask you what the main question is here. And it's this concept of due process, and I think I have one story uh, to add to it as well. Um, and it's in the 5th and the 14th Amendment. At the bottom of the 5th Amendment, it says, um, basically it is saying, um, mm, no, no person, and then it says, um, uh, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And then in the 14th Amendment, a couple pages later, it says, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Okay, so the question is, is can the government take away your life, liberty, or property? Can they take your life? That would be uh, killing you, execution. Can they take your liberty? That would mean uh, taking away some of your freedoms, uh, taking away uh, your rights to do things uh, or not do things. Uh, can they take your property? If you own property, can the government confiscate, take your property? Uh, so can they take away those things? And based on the 5th and the 14th Amendment, the answer is, the answer is, the answer is yes and no. It depends on how you say it. So can the government take away your life, liberty, or property? Yes, as long as it's done with due process. Can the government take away your life, liberty, or property? The answer is no, not without due process. So they, so the answer is yes, they can take your life. That's called execution. They can do that. Can, so the federal government can do that. So can the state government. Uh, they can, uh, you know, lethal inject, put something in you to inject you and take your life away. They used to do it by hanging or electric chair or something like that. Can they take away your liberty? Yes. They can do that by locking you up in jail. They can do that by having a DUI checkpoint. I'm driving from point A to point B. I've got to pull over at point C because uh, they want to check my, to see if I'm drinking and driving. And as soon as they do that, they've taken my liberty. They've done that with wearing the mask. They've taken liberty. Um, uh, so, so when they make laws and so forth, they do take our liberty. They can do that. Can they take my property? If I own land, if I own a house, can they come in and take my property? And the answer to all those things is yes, they can do those things as long as it's with due process. And if you believe it's not with due process, you could file a lawsuit, hire some lawyers and see if you win. And if you win, then they, well, they can't give back your life. You'd be dead. Uh, but they can give back your, maybe some of your liberties and let you, uh, you know, do the things you were going to do. They can maybe give you back your property. But they can take those things away. Uh, like I said, execution, they can do that for, for crimes, um, capital crimes, you know. Uh, they can do that. Uh, they can take your liberty. I gave some examples of that. They take your liberty. Uh, the state takes your liberty as a, as a kid, as a young kid, uh, with compulsory education. You don't have the liberty to just go. That's why you plan senior ditch days, which, by the way, every day uh, for the last several months or every other day now is kind of a senior ditch day. Uh, so I don't know what you all plan for that, but that's kind of kind of took the wind out of those sails. But they can they take your liberty saying you have to go to school. And you say, well, I want to go to the beach today. Well, you don't have the liberty to do that. So the state does take our liberties. Do they take our property? Yes. Uh, when I went to school at Fresno State, if you've ever been to, in Fresno, uh, uh, Highway 41, which goes right through the middle of Fresno, that didn't exist. Uh, what was there? Houses were there. And they took those houses. They have to give them a fair price. It's called eminent domain, but they get to define what is fair. Ask people out here uh, who are going to be losing land to high-speed rail. The government is taking property. I'll put a video up about that later. It's uh, usually when I show that video, it's about a court case, a couple court cases, uh, but usually it makes me start throwing things in class because uh, I get a little ticked off about um, the government taking property. Uh, one year, we even had an opportunity to vote on a prop proposition to make it more difficult to, for the government to take our property. And I think there was another proposition on the same ballot about same-sex marriage, and that got a lot of commercials about it. But uh, there weren't very many commercials about uh, taking our property. It's called eminent domain, and people didn't even read about it, and uh, it didn't pass. And so in California, it's pretty easy to take your property. If the government wants it, they're going to get it, and they'll give you a fair price, um, and you don't have a choice. And you can say, well, yeah, but this property's been in our, in our family for 100 years. Okay, well, year 101, it ain't. And here's some money. Well, we don't want any money. We want to keep it. We have memories. Uh, you're going to make new memories is what you're going to do uh, somewhere else. And so <clears throat> they can do those sort of things. So what we want to do, I just have, uh, is it three, three cards? Yeah, three cards. There's two kinds of due process. There's one, and, and I'll tell you a story about uh, one of them. We'll just do this one first. This one is called substantive due process. And that question is, is the substance of the law fair? Is it a fair law? So this would be the case if, if uh, the government passed a law, and this has been challenged already that says, or a mandate that says we have to wear masks or you can't congregate, you know, closer than uh, uh, six feet, four inches or whatever the mandate is. And uh, people challenge that. They challenge that on the substance of it. Is that a fair law? There was a law that said um, all people had to go, all kids uh, up to eighth grade uh, had to go to a, a public school. And that was challenged. The substance of that was challenged because a religious group, I think they were, I think they were Amish actually, or no, it's a Catholic group, said, well, our kids aren't going to public school. They're going to go to school, but they're going to go to private school. And so they struck the law down. There was a law that said married couples or anybody couldn't practice birth control. And that was challenged and said, you can't tell. That's the substance of that law is unfair. So that would be what is called substantive, substantive due process, the substance of the law. Well, sometimes it's a fair law, but the process used is not fair. So this is called procedural due process. And this is where you find uh, cases where you hear someone getting off on a technicality. They're guilty, but the government didn't do all that they were supposed to do. And the person uh, gets off, gets, goes free. I'll tell you a story that happened here at the high school several years ago, uh, maybe even a decade ago. Um, we had Red Ribbon Week uh, during October. Say no to some drugs. You know, you don't want to say no to Tylenol when you need it. But anyway, so we had this rally, and I, and I remember the guy. They had a guest speaker, and he came in, and he was going to try to get people to say no to drugs. And now he's bringing a guy or a person that uh, used to be on drugs, and now they're not. And so all the kids are going, "Well, I think I'll try for a while, and then I'll get off, and then I'll become a guest speaker." Um, I always wondered why they didn't just bring someone in who's never taken drugs. And look, here's a successful person. They never even tried. Anyway, this guy comes in, he rides a Harley Davidson across the gym floor. And the first thing I'm thinking is, what? "Why they let him do that? That's dumb. We're not uh, uh, letting him do that. That's dumb." So he's in there, and he's talking all about his life of a drug dealer, a drug taker, a drug seller. I mean, this guy was a druggie. Um, and, and, you know, and now he's not. And I didn't hear the whole speech. I heard parts of it. But my seniors that year, when we came back to class, they were angry at him. And I was like, why? Why? What happened? He goes, well, did you hear the story? I said, well, sort of. And they said, 
the police had been doing like stakeouts at his house and so forth. They got the search warrants and all that kind of stuff, and they had it already. And uh, and he was guilty. And they went to his house uh, one time, and they were going to storm his house. They did storm his house, and the police went up. And one of the police officers, as he was going up the steps of this guy's porch, his gun in his holster discharged. That means it went bang bang. It shot, and it shot a bullet into the guy's porch. I think it was the floorboard of the porch. Well, what happened? Well, this guy's guilty, but the lawyer got a hold of that little bit of information and said, wait a second, wait a second. My client may be guilty, but the process you used to arrest him, shooting your gun, is unconstitutional. They threw the case out. And so my seniors are listening to that going, that dude should not be in our gym right now, riding his bike across the floor and speaking to us. He should be in jail right now. He could be talking to them in jail. Um, and so they were a little upset. And sometimes we get like that when someone who we think is guilty gets off on a technicality, but it's supposed to protect us. And this is very, very relevant to today with, with uh, police brutality and so forth. It protects us from corruption on the government side where they're getting, uh, maybe they're searching without a warrant or you know, things like that. They're doing things uh, that are denying us our due process rights. And that's an important uh, issue. And there's a balance there because, uh, you know, there's been other cases where the search warrant um, had the wrong date on it. And a lawyer will get that and say, oh, wrong date. My client's guilty, but wrong date. Got to throw all the evidence out. And sometimes courts have said, well, that was an, a mistake in good faith. Uh, that was a secretary at the police department or at the courthouse that accidentally put the wrong date. Your client's going to jail. So sometimes that happens. Uh, and, but it is a balance. And I remember a, a friend of mine, he was a, a Marine and then he became a highway patrolman. And the reason he became a Marine and then a highway patrolman, he, in school, he didn't like to write. And after he became a highway patrolman, he realized writing is a huge part of his job. And it's not a teacher that grades it. It's a lawyer who grades it to see if he has crossed every T, dotted every I, to try to find a loophole to get their client off on a procedural due process uh, issue. So when I post this lecture, I'm also going to post some cases. Um, and they're just short ones. And you should just look through them and ask yourself two questions. You should ask yourself, number one, is that a substantive issue? Is that about the law itself? Or is that a procedural issue? Is that about the process used to uh, arrest somebody? And then the second thing you should ask yourself as you're becoming a better and better judge is, was that fair? Were their due process rights denied uh, and making it unfair? And one of the cases I'm going to give out to you too is called the ambiguous suicide case. And that one will make your head uh, and I have no answers for that case. When you read it and you're going to come and ask questions, hey, wait, what happened? What happened? And I'm going to say, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it is this probably the strangest case I've ever uh, seen in my life. And uh, so anyway, um, more on that later. I got to think about that a little bit. So let's go ahead and um, let me just say one last thing. When I put out the, these cases, I'll put them attached to the same uh, uh, material here on uh, Google Classroom. But when I put those out there and there's a list of, I think, 10 of them, see if you can figure out which one is different than all the others. And I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. The question is, is can the government take away your life, liberty, and property? And the answer is no. The other question is, can another citizen take away your, well, they can't take away your life, that's murder. They can't take away your property, that's theft. But can someone else take away your liberty? That's not the government. For example, if you came into my store, if I had a store and you want to shop in my store and I took away your liberty of shopping and saying, you can't come in my store, I don't serve people like you, can I do that? You have seen the signs, we refuse the right to, to we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Is that even, would that even stand up in a court of law? That's the question. So look at those cases. Hey, later.